Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Hajim Zero here, back with another uh, quick movie review. Um, this one was a very, very sad one. Uh, you know, the good thing is that, well, not really good thing, but the thing is I really didn't cry, but I really, really felt bad because uh, it reminded me of another film um, which had Keanu Reeves in it, uh, Hardball, mainly in one scene from both these movies in particular. So um, this is uh, Gook, and it's uh, done by um, Justin uh, Cho. I think that's his name. Uh, David So from um, his YouTube channel and, you know, Just Kidding News and um, his vlogs and all that. And uh, Simone Baker, who plays, um, I think her name is uh, Amy Amyla. In the in the film, I could be wrong. Uh, good thing I remember those names by the top off the top of my head. And also Justin Cho, he's been around in film. He uh, he was in the Twilight movies. He was the um, the Korean kid in the group, and he's had a few guest spots on TV, you know, um, and also a television show. I remember what I think the first thing I seen him in was Just Jordan on on Nickelodeon when. Uh, you know, those shows that were, you know, those black somewhat shows, but they casted other minority characters and it was very progressive and it's pretty dope. You know, I really liked that show. I was pretty disappointed when it did get canceled. But um, this is a, a movie that takes place around 1992 in L.A., right around the whole Rodney King, you know, riots. And um, the three main protagonists are pretty much the main a a actors I just talked about uh there of course there are other characters in this as well I know the, the character the actor that portrayed keith which is kamala's um uh brother um did a good job and the sister that was in it also did a good job and the gentleman that played mr kim which is i believe justin's uh father had did a good job as well but um this film uh the cool thing, what I liked about it, it's an independent film that the creator had both sides, you know, of, you know, of what he knew and also what he, how he, what he also knew or getting the knowledge on um, making films, you know, professionally. And he wrote and produced this as well as starred in it. And, you know, uh, the him and David So, who portrayed his brother in the film, he even looked into what he wanted in his background and, and what he wanted to be. I think he said he wanted to be an R and B singer. Um, the 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 actual David So and you know that he wrote that in the film and it's funny because it is a good plot point in the film as well. I thought it was a write off when I read about it on the trivia. But um the two characters, uh they they own a family business uh, left behind by the father they didn't really say I don't think they said much about the mother but of course they immigrated from Korea uh, I think the characters did I know behind the scenes I think David So was born in, in in Korea and they immigrated you know here and what I will say David So he I really hope he does more films you know because he did a very good dramatic one here um but I think at the time this movie came out, I think he said he really didn't, didn't want to. It's just something he did and he tried and he did a very good job. But, you know, um, the funny thing is that there was very good chemistry between both of them. I saw a funny video between him and Justin. Um, you can definitely tell, you know, it was funny when I heard about this movie, too, because I, I think I saw a video of them arguing about something at a restaurant and... <laughs> I'm thinking of the image right now. Um, I think it was when he was doing his car vlogs or something like that, but he sometimes took the camera in with him and then him and Justin were having a conversation and then it got passionate and heated. I don't know what triggered it, but Justin had just got pissed and then he eventually just told David, to, you know, dude, just take me home. And he said the most awkward, silent, you know, car ride in the camera and like Justin's just looking for it all pissed and shit. It was funny to me, but it's just stuff like that. You can really tell they had a good sibling brotherly dynamic. You know, they can argue like that, but I don't know how too serious it was. But like I said, that was before they had did the movie and everything. So it wasn't after it would have been different. You know, they would have 
it would have been all over social media and all that. But um, <laughs> that I'm thinking about that video now that because David So's a funny dude and just the whole scenario was funny when he edited. He put on there the most awkward ride home. <laughs> but um, yeah, these two characters, they remind me of a lot of, uh, you know, Asian Americans I went to um, school with, uh, especially the ones who who were immigrants. Um, and they got exposed to the bad part, you know, of our culture and mainly with the with the racism and in the story. Uh, both care, both sets from Kamila's, you know, home family. And of course, uh, with the two brothers, they had a bad, you know, you know, uh, home life. Both the parents are out of the pictures. Both of them are di have died. And what Mr. Kim tells them is that, you know, both of the parents were there the night when some robbery happened, and you know, they ended up, you know, getting getting killed. So um, they own a shoe store. Uh, even the look of the shoe store itself, it looked like it was a mom and pop, you know, store and you know, we're trying to keep the building afloat and it just it just in a good way uh cinematically he did a very good job in making this stuff looking you know depressed and and authentic and raw and um you know it was just a very good you know well looking location story the whole thing takes place in one day from sun up to sundown and you know, uh, even, you know, the title of the film, you know, it's a it's a racial slur against, you know, Koreans and, and Vietnamese, mainly by the, the U.S. Army. Um, I don't know what words they use on the street. I know the, the racial slur chink. It, I think that was more like on, on the street. And of course, uh, I heard the other one before Zipperhead. But the good thing is that I never knew it of these racial slurs, even growing up, I never heard them, you know, I just referred to all of them Chinese. And then of course I got more educated when I got older and I realized all Asians, yeah, they come from different parts of Asia, just like the same thing with Latinos. They come from different parts of South America. And, you know, I'm very glad that, you know, I went to school with, you know, diverse, you know, uh, kids from other cultures. Of course it started, you know, ironically I went to an all black school at one point and there were um Indians and um and um people of Middle Eastern descent that were, you know, integrated there. As well as I went to school with white kids as well. I went even went to an all white school. So I'm glad I had that experience of the different dynamic, you know, growing up. And then of course, you know, uh I think uh I finally went to school here in Georgia and I stayed for like I didn't I stopped moving around. It had to be like when I was in wasn't he? I think it was sixth grade, six or seven. Yeah, in, yeah. Well, in six, I, I I still went. Yeah, I was here. Then seventh grade, I got held back, and then came here. And then when it was around, yeah, I repeated seventh grade twice. The second year, I was here, and then for the rest of my you know grade school years, I was I was always here. So I was glad for. You know, that experience, I learned a lot of, you know, about different cultures and different people. And of course, I was in an anime club, so, you know, that, that diversified me more into Japanese culture a little bit, you know. And then right when I got to college, you know, it opened up my whole mind to everything else. And film was a very good, good, good way of me getting exposed. I started watching, you know, foreign films and and um, not just from, you know, Asia, but of course, some of the ones from Europe. Uh, hopefully I see some good stuff come from Africa, you know, love to see that bandwagon of their life, you know, in a really good independent dr drama, dramatic movie like this one. But um, like I said, this movie was very sad. I really don't want to ruin, you know, the ending because I want you this is like one of the movies that I won't spoil, you know, even though I spoiled it for myself because let's just say when it deals with gun violence at even at the at this time at any time and you know people get hurt is is like is very very devastating and how it happened it, it still kept me guessing to the very end cuz I skimmed and I found out what happened to one of the characters but I didn't really read on the pieces that that you know that got to that point 
And another um, thing I liked about this movie, I don't know if, if Justin had intellectually knew this or if the if the actor that played Keith had um had told him this but you know the the state of the of the black male in this country um and which was very well betrayed in this the ones who believe you know there's they ain't shit going on and look at our situation the ones who are really just existing you know, and they believe that, you know, the system owns something if they see an opportunity. So, of course, if you're familiar with the, with the riots that happened in Watson 92, people were looting and getting free shit. It was pretty much a little bit of the same thing, you know, that went on here with the George Floyd thing. And, of course, the other major cities that were hit with the riots. And, you know, of course, Dr. King said, you know, the riots happened of the voice of the unheard. But at the same time, some of the ones are doing it to, to justify, you know, something technically that didn't happen to them or j just justified in general. Pretty much two wrongs. Yeah. Doing two wrongs and believing, you know, making it right and ironic on the boondocks. It was a joke that Ed Wensler has said, yeah, we just keep doing the wrong thing until it comes out right. And the sad part, that is like the American dichotomy. And usually people don't get punished. You know, it'll be some years later, you know, it'll be brought up how wrong it was or there's evidence and they still won't get punished. But uh, it did a very good job or Justin or or if the actor did it, had betraying that because, you know, when he finds out that, you know, his, his kid sister's hanging out, you know, with the Asians and they have a, a very cool relationship and it just sucks, you know, um. That is you living in a world that's really telling you that, you, yeah, you guys don't belong together. And it's I think it's implied, you know, I really have to, you know, go back and look at it again because, you know, uh, the other character, Mr. Kim, had told, you know, what really happened. And I think the death between both of their parents had really brought them together because even Justin Cho's character of Eli had knew Kamala's, um, you know, sister and they seemed to have. A decent relationship even though the interaction just seemed so stale and and you know uncool and it just seemed like there was something there something else that was going on it was very bad to be honest I wanted more backstory you know from the characters um the thing is with me you know I'm I wouldn't call myself a director but uh um Michael Mann he's a very very good director and he puts a lot of backstory in his characters if you see the movie Heat or Collateral, you know, um, some of the actors had, had really said that he takes that time and to give additional layers. I think Tarantino as well, you know, but I know Jada Pinkett and, and Tom Cruise and even Jamie Foxx said on, on that movie, yeah, it really gave a lot of layers to their characters that he had told them, even though you never saw it on screen. It was really to pre prepare them psychologically. And don't get me wrong. Justin did a good job with this. Like I said, the way he wrote his character, especially the way he wrote uh, David So's character of Daniel, the brother, and how, like I said, he used one of the things that, you know, that was his talent, you know, as being a singer and a comedian. He wrote it, you know, it was a kind of a plot point in the movie, you know, when he gets beat up, you know, twice. And he did, didn't didn't know what was going on. You know, the whole Rodney King riots thing was was um was starting. And uh, you know, if it was up to me, um, in certain high schools, uh, if there's beef going on like this, in my opinion, you know, they should definitely show this movie, Be you know, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings, and it sucks that. You know, here in America, racism does exist. You know, I'm not going to deny it, sugarcoat it, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and it sucks because majority of, of a lot of people, they already see race when they look at you, you know, by default of the analyzing you. Now, the catch is, and I think I said it before, are they going to discriminate you because of it? But, you know, I remember one of my language arts teachers was saying that when you meet people, you you analyze every single detail from their race, their height, their weight, you know, um, their haircut, the way they're dressed is just an, an impression. And, and it's very true. Um, mainly with me is, is that 
of course, I'm not a racist. You know, if you look at my room all around, it's built on a foundation of a lot of, you know, creative people who've done different things. You know, what turns me off about a person, and I said a person, is just how they act. You know, if their vibe is cool or not, and that's what we need to start doing. But it sucks because racism is sold in this country. Um, I wouldn't even say good or bad racism. is It's just that it's sold, you know, to a point where you understand both sides of the, of the perspective. But at the same time, yeah, you can still pinpoint when something is legitimately like racist and fucked up. And that's the thing about me. You know, I see, you know, both points of views, but... Just because I see them doesn't mean I agree with one or both of them. So that's just, you know, how I see it. Um, Again, uh, check this movie out. It's very good, uh, especially what's going on. It doesn't have, you know, it. when I saw the reviews, I didn't see much of a, of a political agenda. You know, it would be funny if I did see one, you know, with a right winger. I know that. David So, he said he did get some heat, you know, the way that, you know, the Latino guy was being portrayed or something like that, or someone tried it. And he said it was bullshit because he knew that dude, you know, personally. And I think it was something of a, of a, of a they tried to put on him a racist, ed, ed, you know, Oedipid or something like that. Pretty much it was just another SJW. But besides that, that's pretty much all I have to say about the film. Um, and I will see you guys in the next review. Peace.